Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Man and Billy Mills Orchestra. Fibber and Molly join us in a moment. When you use a self-polishing floor wax on your floors and linoleum, how long do you expect it to last? Well, whatever your past experience has been, be prepared for a big surprise first time you use Johnson's water-repellent glow coat. For glow coat now not only gives floors better protection against water and wear, it also lasts up to four times longer because it's water-repellent. Now, you can see why water-repellent glow coat doesn't disappear when moisture touches it. Water, spilled food or drinks, tracked in mud or snow, just whisk off its hard, shining surface. You can even damp mop a glow coat-protected floor repeatedly without killing its shine. Yes, you get up to four times the wear from glow coat now because it's positively water-repellent. Tomorrow, get Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Remember, there's been no change in the regular glow coat package, but there's a wonderful difference inside. We take you now to the office of Wistful Vista's number one general practitioner, Dr. Gamble, who is examining a patient. Waldo, my boy, I have never examined anyone who was so thoroughly exhausted and run down as you. You're in terrible shape. Look at my fingertips. Gee, all red and scratched. What happened? Had to sandpaper them to feel your pulse. <laughs> Tell me, son, how did a big six-footer like you get into this condition, and how long has this been going on? Doc... Up till yesterday, I felt swell. Uh -huh. I'm working as a salesman at Silver Jack's clothing store. Oh. Well, I was on the job yesterday, healthy and happy, when this guy comes in with his wife to buy a suit. I walks up to him. Hi, bud. I'm in the market for a set of threads. <laughs> Show me some stuff. Certainly, sir. What type of a suit do you like? Well, he likes them wrinkled and shiny. <laughs> with pockets full of stub pencils and pool chalk, and a seat that looks like an empty shopping bag. <laughs> but I don't. Now let's get him one that I like. You'll find me very easy to please, bud. You got a nice conservative tweed and a good homespun shark skin with maybe a little large check pattern? A conservative large check in a homespun tweed shark skin? Mm -hmm. Well, that's rather a difficult order. Well, just show us a few things. I'm sure we can select something. Yes, madam. If you'll have a chair, I'll go make a selection. Let's see. You're about a 40 stub, aren't you? No, I'm a matronly 36. <laughs> oh, I meant the gentleman, madam. Oh. Well, I don't know, bud. It's been too long since I bought a new suit. Better throw the tape on me. I got a deceptive figure. <laughs> Very deep chest. Goes from my neck clear down to my hips. Well, I guess I had better measure you, sir. Now, let me see. You think that tape is long enough, Buster? Well, it doesn't matter, sir. It stretches. What's that, an elastic tape measure? Yes, madam. It's a new feature in our fitting department. With a rubber tape, we can measure anything in the store. Any suit will fit. I mean, any <laughs> suit in the store will fit. Yeah, well, that's a wonderful idea. Very smart merchandising, bud. Well, thank you. Now, let me see. Chest, 29 and a half. Hmm. Now the waist, please. Waist, 39. And the hips. Hips. Hmm. 44. It's 44? Where do you carry your wallet, dearie? In my inside coat pocket. <laughs> oh, for a minute, I thought I had something. I think I have your size pretty well in mind now, Mr. Uh, Mr. McGee. Fibber McGee. This is my wife, Mrs. McGee. How do you do, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. McGee. I'm Mr. Cuffington. Waldo Cuffington, Foreman and Clark, 1936, come Lottie. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, folks, I'll show you some of our stuff. Manly chap. Reminds me of Lloyd Nolan. Why? Because the last time I seed Lloyd Nolan in a picture, I got into a fight with a guy over some spilled popcorn that looked just like this guy Cuffington. I don't think Mr. Cuffington looks a bit like spilled popcorn. Huh? 
He looks to me more like... Well, look who's with us. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimp, old man. Nice to see you, boy. Hello, folks. <laughs> Buying a suit, Mr. McGee? Well, I ain't in here to spear warthogs, Wimp. <laughs> He talked him into buying a suit, Mr. Wimple. He's lost a little weight, you see, and his trousers are so loose, it's a social hazard every time he runs for a streetcar. <laughs> Want to stick around and see what the well-dressed man is wearing his election buttons on this year, Wally? No, thank you, Mr. McGee. I just... Mr. Sam Gorbis, please report to the alterations department. Mr. Sam Gorbis, to alterations, please. Hmm, well, looks like Sam made the pants too long again. <laughs> You were saying, Mr. Wimple? I was saying that I just came in to return a suit. Oh, how's Mrs. Wimple, Wimp? You mean, sweetie face, yeah. my... <laughs> my big old wife. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, she's just fine, I guess. I had a card from her this morning. Oh, out of town, is she, Mr. Wimple? No, she's at home, Mrs. McGee. But I'm living at the YMCA. <laughs> she put me out of the house last week because... <laughs> I was naughty. <laughs> yeah? What'd you do, Wimp? Oh, it was nothing serious. Just a boyish prank, really. I just bet it was. You see, like all elephants, Sweetie Face is horribly afraid of mice. <laughs> so one night while we were having dinner at a friend's house, I let a mechanical mouse run across the room. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> What happened, Wimp? She whammed you with the ketchup? Oh, no, Mr. McGee. She jumped up on the table, slipped on the butter, fell into the gravy, scorched her neck on a teapot, rolled into the succotash, fell off the table into a wine cooler, got ice down her neck, started to jump up and down, stepped on the hostess's foot, the hostess hit her with a lobster shell, and Sweetie Face knocked her cold with a sugar bowl. <laughs> I think it was a sugar bowl. Heavenly days, don't you know? Well, I couldn't see very well from under the sideboard. I was so... <laughs> you a selection of suits, Mr. McGee, for you... Oh, hello, Wally. Hello, Waldo. I came in to return a suit. What suit, Wally? Remember when we were playing bridge during your lunch hour last week? Well, I seem to have walked off with all the clubs. Here they are. Aww. See you later, <laughs> Well, uh, see anything here you like, Mr. McGee? Here's a nice homespun. Like it, Mrs. McGee? Not a bit, Mr. Cuffington. I like this great tweed, don't you, McGee? No, that's too conservative. It looked like I just passed a dividend without speaking to it. <laughs> I like this blue pinstripe. Oh, no, no, that's too loud, dearie. How about the brown flannel? Oh, that brown flannel. That is... thing with my complexion? And had, uh, have everybody ask me how I got out of Shanghai alive? <laughs> How's about this one, the houndstooth chick? Houndstooth is right. You could wear that to a dog fight and nowhere else. <laughs> I like this nice gabardine myself. May I see... Suggest... Quiet, bud. <laughs> no, that gabardine ain't for me, Molly. It's too sophisticated. In my opinion, sir... Well, then how about this shaggy sort of Chevy at McGee? That's a very heavy... Oh, no, not that thing. My gosh, it looks like it was wove out of old pipe cleaners. <laughs> well, it was a nice try, Buster, but you better show us a few more. Very well, sir. But if you could only give me some idea of what you'd like, My sir. goodness, Mr. Cuffington, we have no idea till we see it. Now, you just keep trying. That's a good lad. Yeah, stay with it, Cuff. I'm easy to please once I'm satisfied. <laughs> now, see if you can't find... Mr. Caldwell, please. Please call Will Call, Mr. Caldwell. Call for Mr. Caldwell at Will Call. Mr. Will Caldwell wanted at Will Call. <laughs> Will Mr. Will Caldwell please call Will Call? Thank you. Now, you just take your time about finding a suit for my husband, Mr. Cuffington. We have all day. Isn't that nice? <laughs> well, I'll go see what else we have, Mrs. McGee. He seems a little jumpy, don't he? Self-conscious kid, I guess. Probably don't get many discriminating customers like us, and he don't know oh, how Hello there, Molly. Hello, McGee. Well, my goodness, it's his honor. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Latrive. Tell me, Latrive, as a politician, what did you think of Truman's budget message? 
Well, to give you a politician's answer, McGee, I'd say I both agreed and disagreed with it, Mm -hmm. and I'll have to give it further study before I can make a definite statement, although I can say right now that it had its points, both good and bad, and should be judged carefully in a nonpartisan manner to achieve the best results for the good of the country. (laughs) Please don't quote me. Mr. Mayor, we won't. No. At least I won't, because I'm not quite sure what you said. (laughs) Me too, either, and him also. (laughs) You come in to buy some clothes, did you, Latrell? No, no, I met Wallace Wimble, and he said you were here, and I wanted to invite you both to a dinner party at my apartment tonight. Impromptu and informal, about 8.30-ish. Ah, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll be delighted to come. Yeah, gee, thanks, Latrell. 8.30-ish, eh? We usually eat dinner about six o'clock-ish, but I'll sneak myself a sandwich about seven-ish to hold my appetite-ish. Splendid. Splendid. And uh, if he's buying a new suit, Molly, uh, please ask him to wear it tonight. Oh, I will, Mr. Mayor. Good. Good. The last time he came to my house, my butler started pointing out which windows he wanted washed. (laughs) Well, I'll see you tonight. Uh, Yeah, thirty. Boy, this is wonderful, Molly. That guy really knows how to feed a mob, too. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yeah. I hadn't been to a good party. Ah, there, Mr. Cuffington. More suits, I see. Yes, I have quite a lot more here. (laughs) There we are. At least a dozen to select from. I think you'll find something here you'll like, Mr. McGee. Hmm. See anything in that batch you like, Molly? Mm, No, I can't say I do, McGee. Except maybe this herringbone. Oh, the herringbone is a very nice No, piece. no herringbones. <laughs> How about this plaid? No, no plaids, dearie. Not for you. Too bulky. If I might suggest Look, that... McGee. Here's a nice gray sack suit. Sack suit is right. Looks like they just took the potatoes out of it. <laughs> Look, Cuppy, go get another batch and see if you can... The King's Men and Chattanooga Shoe Shine Boy. Have you ever bashed your heart around Fort Lynn's Grand, where a little ball of rhythm has a shoe shine stand? People gather round and they clap their hands. He's a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga Shoe Shine Boy. Oh, oh. He charges you a nickel just to shine one shoe. He makes the old kind of leather look like you. The deal is all you want, and that's when he gets through. He's a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag. The Chattanooga shoe shine boy. It's a wonder that the rag don't tear the way he makes it pop. Oh, you ought to see him fan the air with his hoppity hippity hippity hoppity hoppity hippity hop. He opens up your business when the clock strikes nine. He likes to get up early when they're feeling fine. But everybody gets a bit of rise and shine from this great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag, a Chattanooga shoe shine boy. Oh, oh, oh. oh shine it up, boy. Just to shine one show. He makes the old kind of leather look like new. You feel as though you want a dance when he gets through. He's a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag. The Chattanooga shoe shine boy. That hippity hoppity hoppity hippity hippity hoppity shoe shine boy. Well, Waldo, I'm beginning to see how you got in this nervous condition. Did you finally sell him a suit? Did I finally sell him a suit? Hmm. Look, Doc, I showed him and his wife at least 45 suits. I showed him everything but a paratrooper's uniform and a deep sea diver's outfit. <laughs> Did I sell him a suit? Did I sell him a suit? Yeah. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I, no. I, relax. Yeah. Oh. Relax, Waldo. <laughs> 
now, my boy. Don't excite yourself. Here, here, here. Sit down. Sit down, boy. Now drink this. Slowly now, slowly. That's it. Now, just lie back, Waldo, and close your eyes a minute. Try to think of something pleasant. Like strangling McGee. Now then, what happened? Well, it was like this, Doc. Mr. Cuffington. Oh, fine, Mrs. McGee. I'm glad to hear. Yeah, I told you we weren't hard to please once I was satisfied, bud. <laughs> Show him the suit we both like, Molly. Here it is. The blue-gray Cheviot. Oh, no, no, no. That ain't the one, kiddo. It was... It, no, no. It was, it was, it was the brownish-looking tweed. No, it wasn't, sweetheart. It was the... Wait a minute. Wasn't it the dark blue gabardine? Oh, I didn't like that at all, remember? Looks like a chief petty officer who, who cut off his brass button so he could sneak a couple of martinis. <laughs> May I suggest that you try this? No. As long as we can't agree on any of these, Mr. Cuffington, we'd better look at a few more. But, Mrs. McGee, there aren't any more. I've showed you everything. What do you mean there aren't any more? You mean this pile of remnants is your entire stock? Why, I wear more clothes than this to shovel off the front walk. And furthermore, if I... Now, wait a minute, McGee. Huh? Remember the beautiful double-breasted cashmere suit we saw in the window? The tan one? It was gray, wasn't it? No, it was tan. I think it was gray. Tan, I'm sure. Gray, I'm positive. How about it, Cuffy? The suit in the window. Is it gray or tan? It's a tan sport jacket on a pair of gray slacks, Mr. McGee. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Yeah, that sounds good. Get them out of the window, will you, bud? Out of the... You mean you... Well, yes, sir. Right away. Now, don't go away. We won't. <laughs> he better find something for me pretty soon or I'll lose patience with that guy. As it is, I think I've been pretty nice about this. I don't often go for a whole high, Junior. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Well, you finally broke down and decided to treat your gorgeous body to a new yard of burlap, eh? Yeah, I thought... <laughs> I thought my old suit was okay until two cops stopped me on the street yesterday and tried to hang a vagrancy wrap on me. <laughs> well, I'd like to stay and see what you wind up with here, pal, if only out of morbid curiosity. But I can't. Glad I saw you anyway. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Always nice to see you, too. Very courteous of you to say so, Junior. Not that I don't hear a lot of people say that. I remember a friend of mine, an inventor. Hey, did I ever tell you about Parker? Mm. He invented a kind of a pencil sharpener that you stick your fingers in, turn a crank, and it gives you a manicure. No, I don't believe I ever heard of it. What was his name again, McGee? Parker. No Knuckles Parker, we call him. <laughs> but that was later. Well, sir. Oh, you got to go, Junior? Yes, yes, I have. And by way of explanation, pal, the reason I was glad I saw you buying a suit here was that it gave me a great idea for a sales talk on Johnson's sensational water repellent glow coat. Well, if you got You see, go, you... a lot of people just don't realize that all the glow coat on their dealer's shelves is the new water repellent glow coat. Waiting here first. They see that familiar container without realizing that the outside is the same, but that all glow coat now on sale has that built in water repellent quality. Guys, nice, coming back. The water repellent quality. Quality that saves time actually saves you money because it stays on your floors up to four times longer. Glow coat's wax shine remains even after repeated damp moppings. You see, yeah, but what that got to do with me buying a suit? So, so when I saw you buying a suit, I said to myself, Charlie, I said, Charlie, your name is Harlow. I know, but when I think of what water repellent glow coat means to particular housewives, I am beside myself with delight, and I call my other self Charlie. <laughs> Gosh, if that ain't the far fetches So I said to myself, Charlie, I said, I said, Charlie, here's a man who is the same old stuff underneath, but with a new suit, you won't know him. But with water re repellent glow coat, it's the new stuff inside under the familiar exterior. Now, you get the analogy? No. <laughs> Me either. Well, gosh, if you don't, certainly nobody else will, so I better think up something else, I guess. Well, I'll see you later, kid. Goodbye, Mr. Oh. Heaven 
many days, McGee. Where is that sale? Attention, please. Will the store detective please come to Mr. Silverjack's office at once? The customer we threw out this morning is back with a wire for Mr. Silverjack. <laughs> My gosh. They call the store dick when a guy brings a telegram? I said a wire, sir. Huh? He's strangling the boss with it. <laughs> Well, that's life in the... Ah, there, bud. You got that coat and pants out of the window? What took you so long, Mr. Cuffington? Well, the window display was locked, and the window dresser had the key, and he was busy window dressing another window, and I couldn't make him hear me. So I had to go outside and rap on the window, and I rapped too hard, and I broke the glass and cut my hand a little. <laughs> got balled out by the manager. By the time I got some iodine to put on my hand and dried my tears from being balled out. Hold it, bud. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Never mind the sob story. Where's the coat and pants you sent you after? Yeah, the ones in the window that we like. Yeah. Sold. <laughs> Sold. A fine salesman you are. Here you had easy sale on your hands and let it slip right out the window. Why, my gosh, if... Now, you never mind, McGee. It wasn't really his fault. Oh, thank you, Mrs. McGee. Thank you. That's the first kind word I've had today. May I kiss your hand? Oh. <laughs> hey, look, 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 Cuffy. I think you're too emotional for this job. I come in here for the simple reason I want to buy a suit of clothes. And did you show me something I liked? No. But, Mr. McGee, I... Well, you've seen everything we have in the store, and... Gee, I've spent three hours showing you things and... Yes, yes, we know that. But we've spent three hours here, too. Don't you forget that. Yeah. <laughs> my time is pretty valuable, too, Buster. Why, I've fiddled around in here till my... Say, look, Mr. McGee, why don't you let us make you a suit? We have a wonderful tailoring department. Hmm. Say, that's not a bad idea. I've always wanted a tailored suit, but I've always been told they didn't have needles the right shape. <laughs> Get a tailored suit. After all, it's only money. I'll do it. Show me some samples of material, bud, and make it snappy. Yes, sir. I'll be right back, sir. Hmm. I wonder if I ought to have it made with two pairs of pants, because it gets pretty cold these days. Maybe two well, pairs. Well, hello there, McGee. Hello, missus. Well, hello, Oli. Oh, hi, Oli. Are you playing a little hooky from your job today, Oli? Oh, no, missus. I got leave of abstinence. I got to come to the clothing store and get a new leather jacket. My old leather jacket was just worn out. <laughs> Had 18 holes like a golf course. <laughs> you buying a suit, McGee? Yeah, yeah. Tailored, of course. None of that off-the-rack stuff for me, Ollie. I'm pretty fussy about my clothes, you know. Oh, sure, I know. Yeah. I hear lots of members of Elks Club talk about your clothes. Yeah? Everybody thank you used to wear imported suits. They do, eh? What made them think that, Ollie? Well, they say nobody sells clothes like that in this country for the last 15 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you can tell them wise guys for me that... Oh, here's Cuffington again, Molly. Got some samples with you, Cuff? Yes, sir. Hundreds of them, sir. I'm sure you'll find something here you'll like. Heavenly days. We certainly ought to out of all those. You see, Ollie McGee's going to have a suit tailored out of these samples. He... Be... Oh, to good gracious, missus. You, you're just kidding. What do you mean, she's kidding? A whole suit out of little pieces of square cloth like that? <laughs> well, all I got to say, McGee, you wear that down to Elf's Club and we send you home wrapped in a pool cue. <laughs> so long, madam. Goodbye, Ollie. Oh, Very amusing. <laughs> You got these little swatches for all the material. Yeah. <laughs> this is awful looking stuff in this batch. Show me some more, will you, bud? Certainly, sir. Now, this book here shows some very nice worsteds and... No. <laughs> no worsteds. You got any gabardines? Yes, madam. In this book here, some quite nice... Oh, I don't want gabardine, bud. Show me some blue serges. Yes, sir. I... Blue serge gets too shiny here. How about a tweed? Oh, I have some grand tweeds here, sir. They're just... I don't like tweeds. <laughs> they always have twigs woven into them. Let's see some homespun. I'd rather have a shark skin myself. Shark skin? Yes, sir. I... Shark skin? Oh, no, McGee. I think a nice herringbone. Huh? Have you any samples of herringbone, young man? Young man, I... Well, my goodness, where'd he go, McGee? Up on the chandelier. <laughs> Just gave a kind of a little moan and jumped straight up in the air. <laughs> See, there he is. Swinging on the chandelier. 
and making faces. <laughs> hey, Bud. I changed my mind about buying a suit. The only thing wrong with my own is the pants are too loose. Come on down and show me a nice belt. And after you jumped out the window, Waldo, for which I don't blame you, you came right to me? Yeah, I think so. I was kind of dazed, Doc. Oh. I feel better now. Thanks a lot. Well, that's all right, Waldo. You've been through a pretty harrowing experience. You better go out tonight and have some fun. Relax. I can't, Doc. I can't afford it. Now I'm out of a job on account of... I'll never go back to that store. That McGee guy might come in again. <laughs> So what? You can always jump out the window again. <laughs> Look, I'm going to a party tonight at Mail of Trivia's. Why don't you come along? Just for laughs. Oh, me? Yeah. Well, gee, Doc, that's mighty nice of you, but... Oh, come on. You'll have fun, and you need it. Oh, nurse, call the mayor. Tell him I'm bringing a guest with me, and tell him we'll get... <laughs> Nice party, ain't it, Molly? I've had so many horse doovers, I'm straining my new belt. <laughs> Me too, dearie. The mayor is a fine host, isn't he? Yeah. And a wonderful dancer, too. He... Oh, look. There's that nice young man who waited on us this afternoon. Cuffington? Where? Over there with Dr. Gamble. Oh, yeah. Hi, Cuffington. Remember me? McGee? No. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Fibber and Molly return in a moment. When you want a floor wax that will shine brighter, last longer, and take hours of hard work out of housekeeping, just remember three things about Johnson's Glow Coat. It's self-polishing, it's positively water-repellent, it now lasts up to four times longer. Now, I know I don't have to tell you, an experienced homemaker, just how much those three things mean to you in brighter floors, a brighter home, with far less work, and a real saving in money. Glow Coat is self-polishing, it's water-repellent, it lasts up to four times longer. Give yourself the benefit of the greatest development in floor care of the past 15 years. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for the self-polishing floor wax that is positively water-repellent. Ask for Johnson's Glow Coat. over the paper a few minutes before I go to bed, Molly. Hey, did you hear about that million-dollar robbery in Boston? Yes, terrible. Yeah, read how them robbers tied up the employees and gagged them? How they'd have choked to death if Milt hadn't have busted in just in the nick of time? Milt? Milton Burrow. Snatched the gags right out of their mouths. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Here's news, big news for homemakers. There's a marvelous new laundry finish on the market today. It's Brisk, B-R-I-S-K, made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Brisk does far more than ordinary starch can do because it's a starch plus. A revolutionary starching mix that contains a miraculous new ingredient, fabric wax, and that gives four wonderful new advantages. Brisk gives clothes the body and texture they had when new, gives that crisp look without that scratchy feel, keeps starchables 8 o'clock fresh all day long, cuts 15 minutes from every ironing hour on brisk finished garments. Tomorrow, try Brisk, B-R-I-S-K, Johnson's Brisk. Get it at your dealer's.
An adventure in big town is next on NBC. NBC.